Hey everyone, it's May. Welcome to another edition of the May Lee Show. Glad to have you. Uh, we are continuing our celebration of Asian Pacific American Heritage Month here, and I have a really special guest for today's episode. Um, she and I first met 13 years ago in Singapore when I interviewed her the first time, and she was lovely. Honestly, I just adored her, uh, but we haven't seen each other since, um, but um, she is an amazing woman. It's Maggie Q. Uh, we all know who she is. <laughs> She's uh, an incredible actress who has been in huge movies like Mission Impossible 3, Live Free or Die Hard. She has been in hit TV series like Nikita, most recently Designated Survivor. Uh, and she, you know, has done so many other things in TV and film. But also Maggie, she is an activist. She has this side of her that is really, really focused on helping animals for sure. Uh, that's a passion of hers. She's also an environmentalist and conservationist, especially when it comes to ocean conservation. Uh, and she's an entrepreneur. She has uh, two companies. And so she is uh, an all around kind of woman. And what the beauty of Maggie also is that she is just so down to earth. Um, must be her Hawaii background or something. Uh, but uh, anyway, Maggie is joining me now from LA. Hi, Maggie. Welcome to the show. It's nice to be back. We've done this before. I, okay. You kind of remember, but I'm going to remind you, I was just saying that I met you 13 years ago, 2007. Wow. I know. Can wow. you believe? Wow. Seriously? So yeah, that was that's... back in Singapore. You were coming through and I, for the life of me, because those brain cells are gone. I yes. don't remember why you were coming through Asia at that time. Well, what year was it? 2007? 2007. Oh, that would have been for Die Hard. For Die Hard. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So we split up the junkets and Bruce was, we all met in Germany and I had to go to Singapore and Justin was in Australia and Bruce was in Tokyo. Oh, okay. So you're yeah. spreading out. Okay. So you came through Singapore and we had put in a request for my show to interview you. Okay. And I think you were, your team was only giving like 10 or 15 minute slots to people, but right. we begged and said, can we please have more time? So I yeah. think you gave me like 30 to 40 minutes, which was a lot of time. Okay, good. I don't know if you remember this though. We had so much fun in the interview. At the end of the interview, you said this yeah. to me. I tell this story all the time. I'm like, okay. you said to me, oh my God, if you were a man, I would marry you. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, that's such a nice compliment. <laughs> I'm telling you, you know, when you have a mutual love, like we have of animals. Yes. You know, it's so important. Like my, I, I have someone who works for me that told me the other day, her brother, you know, his wife was very tragically killed a couple of years ago and he just started dating. And there was a woman who was very nice and the family met her and she came over finally to his house and she wasn't really having his dogs. Oh, his three dogs. She was a little like, I don't love the dogs on the sofa and this. And he was like, oh, it's nice to meet you. Bye-bye. <laughs> no, I mean, he lived. The guy was like, I'm done. I'm done. Yeah. And I totally get that. I, By the way, excuse me. I totally get that. These guys are my life. These are my children. I don't have children. Uh, so. Same. Exactly. These are my fur babies. The two rescues that I have, you know, yeah. and if someone yeah. doesn't like them, well, bye-bye. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, it's, yeah. So, anyway, so that was 13 years ago when mm -hmm. we met and we haven't seen each other or spoken since. No. So, I was so excited when I finally got this interview. Cause I was just like, and Oh, funny that we have a connection. We have a mutual. We do. Yeah. And that's how that happened. My friend, Perry Donch, who works for yeah. your company, keep up, That's right. Yeah. which we're going to talk yeah. about in a second, but, right. um, she put us in touch and I'm like, isn't it a small world? It's crazy. It's a small world. Um, when she brought your name up, I remembered you. I said, I, I, I told her, I said, I really like me and I, I definitely want to, I want to do this. And I oh. thought that you were in Singapore. I didn't know you were based here. Yeah. And when I found out you were based here, I'm like, oh, even easier. <laughs> I know, exactly. I know. Because when we were scheduling it, your team said, okay, so how about 6 p.m. Pacific time and 9 a.m. Yeah. in China? And I'm like, I'm like, wait, is Maggie in China? And they're like, oh, we thought you were in China. I'm like, no, 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 no I'm in L.A. <laughs> so, <laughs> anyway, so, okay. So, Maggie, yeah. first I have to ask you, uh, there's so much to talk about, but how are yes. you doing in quarantine? Like, what, what's what's yeah. been your life like during this time? I have to say, I mean, I, I and I, and I, I have to say this with the utmost sensitivity to yeah. everything that's going on, obviously with, with people losing their jobs and 
death and, and economies failing yep. and, and, and all of it. I, I was on a movie in Romania from the 1st of January till the end of March. We had sort of had uh, Bucharest for almost three months. And then we were in London. We do a couple, few days in London. And then I didn't even get back to LA until the end of March. And so wow. I, this was such a difficult movie for me. I was so, I really, I said to myself, when I get back, all I want to do is a whole lot of, I mean, nothing. I mean, I'm running two companies and I'm doing, but I don't right. want to do entertainment and everything else I'm doing, right? Okay. I just want to be these dogs and I want to be at home. I mean, I, I would dream about my house. Like I would cry thinking about just my backyard and the yeah. blue sky, you know, you're not getting that in Bucharest. <laughs> so, um, and so my plan was to buckle down, um, you know, really figure out how to pivot these companies based on the current climate right? and, um, work with my team, be with my dogs and, and, re and rest. That was the whole, and I, I am now forced to do that. Totally. You know, we all it, are. It really weirdly worked out from being that tired to right. being, stay home. Cause, because I'm the kind of person, I don't know about you, but I'm the kind of person who just won't let myself rest. Yeah. I don't know what, like, I don't know if it's the Asian female thing. Like, I don't know what it is. Mm, we're just, I think it is. So and we're also so, you know, we have such a sense of responsibility towards yeah. everyone and everything. And so I think that I, I bet most Asian women feel like this, but we, um, <laughs> we just, we don't give ourselves the time. And yeah. I think being forced to is a huge gift. Don't you think? Oh, completely. I mean, what, what else could make the world, the entire world stop? force Nothing. the entire world to stop. Nothing. Right. And so Nothing. I, you know, we talk about silver linings and this is what I also want to talk to you about is that yeah. hopefully the silver linings, many of which will be that we do do a little self-discovery. We do a little self-reflection. We do slow down and not get so mired in like the, right. you know, the distractions of life and this and yeah. that, and just really start like, honing in on what matters. Yes. Yes. Right? yes. Yeah. Oh God, I wish everybody in the world could hear you say that because there's two things going on right now, right? There's people who are totally defiant of this situation and won't be caged. And I mean, all that, crazy. all the craziness, yeah, like it's crazy, truly crazy, craziness, you know, and, and so centered on self and yes. about, you know, the world as a whole and the repercussions, you know, that, you know, for, for others. You know. Right. Right. And oh then, yeah. And then you have what you're talking about where you have people going, um, you know, well, this is, this is my time for me and how do I grow and how do I figure this out and how do I not get eaten up by like the sadness of what's happening around me and right. how do I make myself better. Right. I don't know about you, but I, I'm always trying to make myself better. It yeah. doesn't matter what situation I'm in. It keeps me very busy to yeah. go. I can make this, I can make this better. I can do better here. Right. Right. And be become more compassionate, develop more empathy, develop well, more this, kindness. This, this you and I are dreaming of during this time, because as, as you, you and I both well know, which, you know, and I, I think a lot of people know the, the, the facts in terms of where this disease originated and, and how this, how this pandemic got, got to us and how it was transferred. But I don't think they're, they're really seeing the bigger picture of how nature has fought back. Oh Yeah. Big in, time. In, in such a big way. And, and when, when you say nothing could make the world stop, it's interesting because we look at other sentient living beings as below us as, yeah. as humans. And I, I, I'm not saying I agree with it, but I understand it to some level. We are it, human beings are the most magnificent animal animal on the planet. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we are so evolved means that we have dominion over these other animals who really ultimately come under our care during yeah. our time on this planet, this, right. this precious time we have together, right? Um, all, the, all the native wisdom in the U.S. always talks about how the land and nature doesn't belong to us, right? We borrow it from our children. This is something that you you have to care for because we're passing it on, right? right? Exactly. But in numbers, we've grown so exponentially as a world population that we are so incredibly destructive in our habits. In That's our an understatement. Desire, That's an right? understatement. Yeah. Our, you know, I mean, we, we think about, you know, I've worked on the ivory and rhino horn issue for many years in, in China and Vietnam. Yep. And, 
you know, and, and, and I've always just sort of sat back on both sides. I, I do activism work in both countries because they're the two biggest con- consumer countries yeah. in the world. Yep. And then I also work out in the field in Africa with these animals that have their have faces cut off and, you know, th- things that we have to see. And, and I, and I remember thinking, God, like the, the, the power to keep this species here is in your hands. Yep. You people who are consuming, like whoever you are in the world, this consumption is killing our planet. Like, and the fact that we are now caged, we can't consume, I know. not the way that we used to. No. And that, and that nature in some ways is coming back. I was driving down, you're in LA, so you know the coyote situation. Yeah. I was driving down my street the other day and this coyote was like, you know, like sort of walking down the street, <laughs> like right onto oh the God. right, not on the sidewalk, like down the street. And I went, hello. And I just sort of rolled my window down and he looked at me, no fear whatsoever. And he um, kind of just kept mosing on because it's so quiet. Yeah that the animals have kind of emerged now and are like, well, what's happening? Right. Like, right. Everybody, you know, they're taking they're what I love is like, they're taking the planet back. Right. They literally are like, oh yeah, this belongs to us. And now you guys are locked away. Like you locked us away in zoos and all of, now right. we're going to take it back. It's, it, you know, what's amazing Maggie is how quickly the planet started healing itself. Isn't and it that, amazing? I mean, it makes me cry when I think me about too. it because I'm me like, too. see, this proves that mother nature and the planet, it's there's, it's so resilient. You just so give it a chance and right. it will come back. And that's what well, I hope will stick. But my fear is that it, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Get comfortable again. But here, here's, here's the miracle of what you're saying, which is so incredible, right? So we look at the planet and universally, we look at what it's compromised of, right? And then we also look at the human body. Yeah. And, you know, we're 70, 80% water, same as our bodies. Our, our, our physiology mirrors that of the universe. And planetary, it, it definitely, we are, we are the same, right? Yeah. So when we try to separate ourselves from the planet, it doesn't work because we are, we are so one in the same. Right. We are so proportionate to one another, another that we can't live separately, right? Yeah. And as you're saying with the planet, how quickly it heals, the human body is exactly the same, mm. right? So the human body, if you decide to stop smoking or stop eating crap and stop eating candy bars and fast food and high fat sugar, right, or, right. oil, your body, you start to drop weight. You start to have clarity. You start to sleep better. I mean, think about how quickly you can be a smoker for 45 years and stop smoking and your lungs will renew themselves in seven years. Yeah. You will have a pair of lungs that are as healthy as if you never smoked a day in your life. Right. How forgiving is the body? How forgiving is our planet? But we still take it all for granted as human beings. Well, look at it. Well, the reason I brought the body example up was look at what we do to our bodies. Yeah. Yeah. No, and that's ours. We have to live with it every day right. and see the destruction. So, so think about how easy it is for people to be so removed from the planet oh, totally. and, and, and everything that it requires to right. be healthy because they don't have to see it or live with it every day. I right? know. So this is, this is what I want to ask you because I have my own opinion about this too, is that, wow. Yeah. We saw, we've seen this with our own eyes, the clearer skies, the cleaner waters, you know, the dolphins returning and animals, oh, you know, thri- oh. oh, I mean, amazing. Right. I can't, it really makes me cry. But as we start trying to open back up, I mean, I don't know if you saw this over the weekend in Florida, they oh. left like tons of trash on the beaches, beachgoers, tons, like something like 80,000 tons of trash. Have they learned nothing? And that's why I'm like, oh my God, this is, this going to be all for naught. And that's, yeah. I mean, I I know it's, it's hard to think about anyone in Florida learning anything. (laughs) (laughs) You said it, I didn't, but honey, it's just, like really, I mean, it's just, it's such a weird state. It is so weird. And, and for them to like, to think that like, uh, you know, what our planet has missed is them littering I know, I know. during this time when they've been gone. Like, yeah. What, how do we change this? Exactly. Like, and that's why I'm, I'm kind of posing the question to you in terms of, do you put any thought into it? Because I do. And I'm like, wow. Does, okay. A girlfriend of mine and I were talking about this and okay. she and I were saying, you know what? Actually, this has to go on for a lot longer, 
for it to really hurt and for people to really change because, yeah. you know, if it's too short, then yeah, everybody will go back right. to their old habits. Right. That's right. That's exactly right. right. Temporary, temporary pain is, is easily forgotten. Easily right? forgotten. Yeah. Um, but I, I wonder, interestingly enough, whether people will make that connection because it's really all about making the connection, yeah. right? So saying, okay, you know, I, I lost my job. I lost my business or I'm struggling. Will I ever come back? Will I be able to feed my family? Blah, 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 blah. What is the root of the issue here? Where, where is it that I can be different where I don't contribute to a greater whole right. that makes this happen? Right. Yeah. And it's very polarizing because people will go, oh, well, you know, only in China do they torture animals and do they do these things and that. Ha no, 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 no. Mm -mm. The Chinese are not the only people. It's every culture, every country in the world. Absolutely. Has live markets, is treating it, it's bringing in animals we should not be eating, putting them in close proximity I to mean, animals. Look at our chicken farms and our cattle, you know, it's industry. And, I mean, it's all, I mean, we it's all know this, right? Gross. Yeah. yeah. Farming, all of it. So, so don't pass off your responsibility to another culture and say, well, the reason it got bad there is because, you know, they do it that way, but we're better than that. Right. No, you're not. Yeah. None of us are better than, than anyone else. Right. The truth is we are all guilty. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So yeah. I guess, you know, the one thing I think about is, well, at least maybe like LA, we both live here. We know how horrendous the traffic is. Horrendous. So it's been glorious that there's been no traffic. I mean, it's oh starting, it's starting to come back, but I'm yeah. hoping that now in our change society, maybe yeah. companies will realize that people don't have to go to work every day and drive well, two hours yeah. each yeah. way. Right. This said, right. Like, oh, I, oh, actually, I could have done all of those meetings by Skype, you know. So because we're on the subject of the environment and all of that good stuff, um, your company Keep Up. OK, you said oh. you have two companies. I, Keep Up. And what's yes. the other one? It's a supplement. Uh, it's a health and wellness supplement company called Activated You. Oh, that's right. Yeah. You know what? I've seen your ads. Totally. It's, it's, oh, the, okay. pro it's yeah. the probiotics, yeah. right? Yes, that's correct. Yes. Okay, because I have gut yeah. issues myself, so um, maybe I'll ask you about that too. But we um, send you a box of stuff. I'm so, I mean, I, I've always had gut issues since I was a kid. Um, oh, me too. Me yeah, too. yeah. Um, but keep up. I mean, yes. this company was born out of obviously your love of you know yes. preserving the environment and conservation mm -hmm. and the oceans because yes. it's an athletic company. Oh well, beachwear, athletic wear, you know, clothing mm -hmm. company. But the fabric is amazing. Yeah. It's all 100% from recycled plastic, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Yeah, actually, ocean plastic. Ocean so, plastic, which yeah, we know so is a huge problem. We, we, which we all know is a huge problem. Yeah. And for me, I mean, I, I think I didn't need to create a company just to have a company and be a business owner. Like, that wasn't yeah. on the top of my list. Yeah. But as an activist, and for the many years that I've seen, you know, the animals that I fight for, um, really their populations just plummet because of ocean plastics, yeah. obviously, yeah. You, you know, hunting, all the rest of the things that happen in the ocean, but ocean plastics has been a huge, huge issue for endangered marine mammals. Yeah. And so, you know, if I was going to create a company, I wanted two things to happen. One, I wanted to be able to literally be pulling trash out of the oceans, creating a commodity that was a desire for people you know, on land yeah. and, and where we could then support ocean conservation and the people who were actually fighting the good fight for our oceans every single day right. and support them in their efforts through the products we're making and the profits that we're making. Right. And so that, that was the, that was my dream. And a lot of people, you know, I spoke to a lot of people about it and they went, um, that's really nice, but you're going to, you're going to need investors who want to make money and they're not going to want to really give money away and blah, 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 which, you know, yeah. is People still want to make but a profit. They still want to make a profit. Yeah. But at the same time, I said, you know, but there are people in the world who care because I, I exist. So mm. there's no way that there are people with money who don't. And it's funny because I ended up every single one of my investors is someone that I not only respect, but has a, a really specific heart oh, um, nice. and contributed to the company because they believed in the vision, yeah. not because they thought it was going to be some explosive hit. Um, That's so and, important. And, and that was my desire. And when I got my last investor, I remember I sat at the table and he said, you know, Maggie, business is business, but we're investing in you. We believe in you mm. and your vision. And I burst into tears. Oh. And I, I, yeah. And I turned to my COO and I said, 
I, I just looked at her and she said, it's what you wanted. Oh, you, wow. I, I heard people offering me money. You know, I had people who, you know, guys who make, you know, tires and whatever, yeah. like people who are very, very wealthy. Uh, like, yeah, I can give you money for your company, but I'm like, yeah, but your energy and the spirit <laughs> of you is not what I want tied to this. Yeah. You know, yeah. Everyone involved, their dollar, their spirit has to care yes. because collectively the company can really grow to do amazing things. If everyone who's tied to it matters, you know, and that's and the, the mission. Fact- yeah. And you have to stick with the mission of the company and represent that. Right. So, mm-hmm. you know, you can't just go willy nilly and get whatever investor yeah, who doesn't money, believe in money, it. I know this sounds a little callous, but money is easy to find in terms of there are always investors out there looking for the next thing. So mm-hmm. it's not like you can't find people to give you money, but to find people to give you money, who you respect yeah. and who have actually a core value or right. moral and think about biz- core that value. Is so hard. And right. I told everyone, that's what I'm going to get. And everyone went, uh, good luck. Well, you but- know what? You manifested it. You yeah, know, you yeah. had a vision and you manifested it. So that's yeah. huge. The congratulations on that because I mean, I, I, I was re- going through the website and I, I knew that plastic, I mean, everybody knows plastic is a problem, yeah. but this statistic of 8 billion tons of plastic we've produced and only 9% of it has been recycled. Recycle. That's ins- what, what the hell? Well, I'll tell you what the hell we decided we were going to create this new, you know, um, uh, chemical that created, you know, that was that we would mold into plastic. Yeah. Right. And so we, we decided that this was going to be a game changing industry, which it absolutely is. Yeah. But at the time there was so much money that was going to be made. We didn't regulate it. Right. Right. Because right. Every, all, all, all the powers that be were going to benefit from yeah. this incredible innovation, an incredible invention, definitely are at, the, are at the top of their game. And they, they have the power to say like, well, let's not, let's not think about the future. Let's not think about where it's going once it's produced. Right. Let's just produce it, make a ton of money and let the world figure it out. Yeah. And now we're having to figure it out. Right. And now we send a lot of recycling to China, which is now saying, sorry, we don't want any anymore. So we're just running out of places to put it. So well, yeah. as China should, you know, yeah. China did that in Hong Kong very recently too. You know, Hong Kong's obviously a very small city and all of their trash was going to China yeah. and China finally said, you know what? We don't want your trash anymore quite rightly. And Hong Kong was like, uh, uh-uh. I mean, they had no clue what to do because yeah. they don't have standardized recycling or anything that, you know, really matters. Right. And so if you can take trash and turn it into a commodity, why aren't we doing that yeah. in one of the most wasteful industries? You know, I know that I started in fashion very briefly, by the way, it was very brief, but I, I was in it and I've been around fashion for so many years because of, you know, whatever, you know, being in the entertainment industry, but I do not care about fashion. <laughs> really? I, <laughs> you were like proclaimed one of the most fashionable people one, one year. I, <laughs> could care less about <laughs> any, I mean, it doesn't even, you know, it was just fun, funny this year, you know, everyone's like, the Met Ball's canceled. Oh, I know, like, I know. Yeah. Oh, oh no. Yeah, exactly. Who cares? Exactly. Especially now. It's like, who cares? Look at what oh, I, I, I'm sorry. I, we can't parade our wealth around for I, the rest of the world who could never live this lifestyle exactly. to watch and see it. I mean, I'm over it. Again, it's, I'm going to, I'm curious as to like when this goes somewhat more open and not back to normal. We're never going to be back to normal, but no. you know, as we open up more, I wonder if people are going to like race to like go to the, all the gallows and balls again, or if, are they going to tone it down? I mean, listen, yeah. Maggie, there was no way I would have worn a t-shirt on any kind of television show that I've done. Right. But now I'm yeah. like, I don't give a shit. Look at what this t-shirt I'm wearing wine and <laughs> dogs and weekends. Right now. It's probably like, I shouldn't even say weekends. I should just say week, just week. <laughs> Yeah, there's no weekend. There's no it's weekend. Just seven day weeks. <laughs> just days. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I know we don't. We don't care, and that's why retail is going down the way it's going down. Because yeah. you know, as far as fashion goes, and as far as all that goes, you yeah. know, you know, all the companies that are going brain for up. I have to remind you that Barney's is gone, and Neiman's Neiman is Marcus, just yeah. filed, yeah. and 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 um, I think Saks or it, it's bad. J Crew, a lot of J. companies, Crew, yep. but yeah, not that those are fashion per se, but. We're buying stuff to do what? Well, Where are we going? I mean, who's seeing oh. us? No one's seeing us. And then also the fast fashion industry hopefully will take a turn and pivot because well, that that makes me crazy. 
That makes I, me I really hope so too, because I, I've met a lot of people, you know, in the sustainable space um, that I'm in. I've been meeting a lot of like amazing women, female entrepreneurs, male entrepreneurs, and also women who are uh, documentary journalists mm. who are exposing what's happening in right. the fashion industry, in the fast fashion industry. And I think that if we would just be more like these Gen Z millennial, you know, consumers and care more about wh- where, what we're buying and where it's coming from, it would be a very, very different purchasing world. Yeah. Well, maybe again, this could be the silver lining where people aren't buying yeah. as much because they don't need to. And so maybe that consumerism yeah. attitude will tone down. Let's hope. Yeah. 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 Okay. So yeah. let me ask you about being an entrepreneur. Uh, like you said, you weren't set on ever becoming a businesswoman or, you know, starting a clothing line, but you did because you care about the environment. Yes. Um, how is it going though right now? Because as we were just saying, you know, businesses are struggling depending on what kind of business. And so you yes. had to pivot. So yes. tell me how tell- that's been going for you. Um, you know, it's interesting. It's like, I'm always up for a challenge. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Yeah. You know, I, I, I never mind the time to be able to really figure out what the, what the challenge, um, is going to be met by. Yeah. I have this great team of, of women, as you know, because one of them is a friend of yours yeah. and, um, my, my entire company is women, by the way. Oh, nice. And I didn't, I didn't, you know, set out to hire only women. I, I set out to hire the most qualified people. And Who they were happen all to be women. <laughs> 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 Um, I have to tell you, I'm so pleased. And, and we all work so well together that, you know, we've been able to kind of really kind of recoup, especially after I've been gone for so long. And here's the truth of where we're at. One of the things that people, you know, is the, the in their, how do I put this, it is going to be of utmost concern, but also going to be their number one um, issue moving forward is their health, yeah. right? So people need to stay healthy. So my supplement company is doing well Mm. because people, oh God, I need to, I need to change my game a little. You know, I I need to bring the level up. So that's okay. People still need to work out. They still need to exercise more than ever, actually, you know, to be able to, you know, exercising is great for immunity, everything else. Um, and so they're not purchasing like they used to, cause they're not really being seen mm-hmm. same time. I think that even for myself being at home allows me the time, like if I want to drop something and I don't have to drive half an hour or in LA, sometimes even 45 yeah. minutes or an hour to <laughs> totally. get someone, I can then just easily drop everything and jump into a class. Mm. And so I, I still need you know, athletic Workout clothing. Gear. Yeah. 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 And, and although I think that people don't need to purchase as much or more, I think as a woman, I know for myself, I, with workout stuff, I, I like to, um, change it up. I mean, I, I just do, yeah. I change it up because I get bored yeah. with myself. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we're, we're going into a lot of the markets, you know, China's going to recover before anyone else. Yep. Um, you know, the U S I think is going to go into a recession. That's going to be pretty significant. Yeah. looks like and it. And I think that purchasing here is going to be very different, but you know, there are other places in the world that are recovering first. And mm-hmm. so we're going to focus on those places to be able to carry okay. the business in other countries that just are right. Gonna, right. And, us. and I'm curious, Maggie, do you have an advantage because especially in Asia, everyone knows who you are. Aww. And if I, come on, Maggie, everybody knows you know, who I don't you are. Really think about, you know, it's weird. I don't really. <laughs> Do you not think about it? That's so I, cute. I really? really? I, yeah. You know what? I don't even think about my career or where I sit in that f- for, for whatever reason. I have no clue. Like, I mean, if you talk to my family, if you spoke to them, yeah. you know, they tell you that, you know, I'll be on a talk show or a thing or I'll have a premiere and I don't even tell them. And they go, you know, I had to go to work and my friends told me you were on this thing. Why didn't you tell me? And I I don't know if I put what I'm doing at the forefront of the importance either for myself or even people that love me. Yeah. Is that an Asian thing, Maggie? Because I do. Maybe. No, no, no. I do that too. I don't really tell my family about stuff unless I'm really pressed or if it's something that I think maybe they might be interested in. But otherwise, not really. I think that's an Asian thing where, okay, for me personally, right. 
I think it's honestly because um, I've always been brought up as like, you got to do better. You always have to do better. And so you, you can't impress me. Oh, yeah. I, I'm oh, not yeah. that impressed. Oh yeah. oh yeah. Oh yeah. They're never impressed. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, 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 exactly. Yeah. So I think there's part of that too, which is yeah, interesting. There's a little bit of curse in that, but there's also a little bit of motivation in it too. Yeah. Yeah. And then, but then, you know, I would say that's a character trait for like n- normal Asian. Cause I've been around Asians who are stars yeah. and all they do is think about themselves. Oh, oh, okay. Yeah. I've seen that too. You're right. I I mean, I, you know, I think that I'm in the industry, but I'm not of the industry. So it's a little different because I have so many other, as you know, with the animals and so many passions and so many things I want to do to help in this world. Yeah. And, you know, even as an actress, I'm so blessed, but I'm not curing cancer. Right. So while I'm being blessed, I need to be over here too, giving back for everything that I'm given, yeah. because it doesn't have to be me, Mae. Which is so it could awesome. Be someone else. Yeah. You know, I mean, e- easily. Yeah. And, and, and there are a lot of beautiful girls in this and people with talent and whatever. Yeah. It's, and, and by the way, beauty, let's be very clear. Like beauty for me, I've always, I had a mother who never valued beauty. She always told me to work harder on what kind of heart I had mm. and who I the human. So beauty was never a, a center of anything, but also beauty is inherited. Like, thank your parents, but you didn't earn that. Yeah. Ex- thank you for saying that because I do <laughs> feel like <laughs> we revere, I mean, we revere beauty, oh, physicality so much. Oh my God. It's so much. And it's like, okay, yeah, you know, you could admire somebody's, you know, physical yeah, beauty. Yeah, and, and I do too. I love beautiful things. But, I love But people. you're right. I love that you said that they didn't yeah. earn it. It's not like they worked for it, right? So it. we yeah. shouldn't idolize that so much beyond, you know, again, someone's heart yeah. or someone's right. compassion right. or someone, these nurses and doctors, you know, the frontline workers right now. I mean, that to me is, to, beauty. is beauty and to be revered. Well, yeah. and think about how, how much worse it's gotten with social media oh. and everything else. Now we're worshiping a beauty that's not even real. I know. Because people are, you know, they have so much plastic surgery now. They're face tuning. They're right. filtering. Yes, yes. People don't actually look like that. Know. You know what I mean? So it's like, so, you know, and I, and I witnessed this with a friend's daughter. And my friend actually called me and she said, oh, can you come over and talk to my daughter? Because um, she won't hear me, but she'll listen to you. I said, okay. okay. So I came over and I'm sitting with her daughter and she's, you know, she's addicted to Instagram and she's looking at all these Instagram accounts of all these mm. hot young things now in the U S who yeah. are married to this person and this person. And she's just falling deeper and deeper into this hole. And by the way, this girl is so pretty. I mean, and she has a beautiful life. Her parents are successful. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah. So I, I asked her, I said, honey, what is it that you're what is it that you're feeling in terms of when you look at all this stuff, like it, it seems like an, a form of emotional cutting, right? Mm. So you're, you're, you're harming your, your psychology, you're yeah. harming your emotions, you right. know, your spirit by not only looking at this, but thinking that because what you're seeing is better than you, that you are less than yes. but what you're seeing is not even real. Yeah. Those girls don't look like that. I know them. I saw her at the Oscar party. <laughs> I mean, you know, I mean, they're pretty, but they're a lot prettier when they're showing you who, what they want to look like. Right. Right. Yeah. And, you know, even if a girl is absolutely gorgeous and does totally look like that, you still shouldn't minimize yourself. Yeah. Not less than her. It's like what people do with doctors. Like my mom, she minimizes herself to medical professionals because she goes, oh, well, honey, he's a doctor. So he's. God, I go, yeah. no, I know more about nutrition than he does. Right, so right. let's be real here. And so we'll laugh and talk about that. And I'm like, mom, walk into a room with confidence, ask that doctor everything that you know about your own body mm. and your own health, right. because no one knows more than you do. Yeah. So he can't tell you how you're feeling or she can't tell you what you should do. You know more than them about you. Yeah. Okay. So when you walk into a room with a doctor, don't be afraid of them. Don't sit there and every drug they say you should take. Oh, okay. That's you so have true. Degree. You have a degree. So, right. you know, but I know that drugs make me sick, but you have degrees. So you're going to tell me to take a combination of six different drugs and I'm just going to do it because you have a you're the doctor. Exactly. Exactly. And doctors, they've done these studies where doctors actually dismiss women much more than they do men, male patients. And so, yeah, like I'm- life. Like, like, well, yeah, exactly. 
in you know. in general. I mean, as a female entrepreneur, when I was raising funds, you know, it was like it was hard. And then I, I've been exactly. doing all these panels and Perry came to one of them. I did a female entrepreneur panel and there was all these different women with flower businesses and service businesses. And they talked about, you know, raising money when they were raising capital for their companies and how hard it was because men who had the same ideas would come into rooms and they would throw money at them. Yeah. Exactly. And the women had to really like, you know, go, go for it completely. Right. And they still go, oh, well, I don't know if you're ready. And, you know, here's the thing about women. And I always say this when I'm on panels, you know, when talking to younger women is that um, women tend to question themselves more and have a little bit more so self-doubt where men, they may not have any skill set, but they'll still be like, yeah, I can do it. I can totally do it. Oh, you know? we know these men. Oh, yeah. yeah. And that's oh, the difference. Those men. <laughs> women are much more realistic about what they're capable of. And so they usually tend to underestimate their capability rather than overestimate. Yeah. You know, you're right. so right. And I think one of the things, if there's any parents that are going to be listening to your show, and I'm sure there are tons of women with children, yeah. um, you know, it's so important. There are certain things you need to give your kids that, that don't need to be earned. Right. Yeah. And, and as Asians, we don't do this as much, right? Love, care, concern, self-worth. Yeah. All those things aren't things that we should have to earn. These are right. things that should be gifted to us when we're children. Like, listen, it doesn't matter whether you're the best or the worst. I still love you. Yeah. It doesn't matter whether she's prettier than you or she has more money than you. You still are worth you know, yeah. gold in my eyes. Right? right. So if we're not given that as children, what happens is we grow up trying to earn those things, yeah. right? right? Which is really unhealthy. It's a dog chasing its tail. It's well, yeah. if I, if, if I have more friends than that person, I'll have self-worth. It's like, yeah, no, exactly. you shouldn't have to earn that. You should have that. That's a gift. And going to social media, like you were saying, that's making it worse. It really is exacerbating that whole like myth and fantasy that's being created. Right. Oh, tell me, so tell me something, Maggie, I know that your history from, you know, when you first started modeling and you went to Tokyo and then Taipei and Hong Kong started your acting career, but you yeah. had a rough go and yeah. you were not treated well. And it seemed like your self-confidence was quite low because of all the struggles that you were going through. Right. Yeah. So that, tell me about that journey because that Maggie versus today's Maggie, obviously very different. Very different. So you had to work on that yourself and build that. So where did that come from, do you think? You know, I think that wisdom can only come with experience, right? Yes. And that's why young people aren't wise, right? Yeah. Young people are knowledgeable because they go to good schools and now they have the information highway, the internet and yeah. everything else they have. But you truly can't know what the hell you're doing until you've tried and failed and, and been, you know, um, challenged beyond your expectation or control. That's yeah. the only time you real I feel you really grow, especially as women, you know? Right. Right. Um, I thank God that I, I wasn't given everything from, from go. Uh, there's a beautiful native American saying, um, may you have your troubles early. Mm -hmm. you know, yeah. which is beautiful, right? Because yeah. then, as an adult, you can try to build to something else. But I remember at that time, I, it was, it was so hard because be, being a woman and being out on your own and, and being, being in an industry that only values certain things. Mm -hmm. I, I have to say one of the things, one of the big lessons I had, especially in Hong Kong, which as you know, is a very, it's a very wealthy city. I think there's more millionaires, and, and billionaires per capita, I think, than in any city in the world. Yes. You know, you see the, yeah. the Rolls Royces and the this, and, the, and you're just going, gee, I mean, it really is. And it's so fast paced. Fast. Everything, everyone's go, 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 because it's all about money. Go, 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 go. Yeah. The, the fashion culture, everything is, it's very elevated, right? Yeah. So I'm in this place. You got to remember, I grew up not even wearing shoes because I grew up on an island and I never wanted to wear shoes. And they forced in me. In Hawaii, yeah. In Hawaii, yeah. I was like mm -hmm. climbing trees, animals, nature, <laughs> beach. That was who I am. So I yeah. end up in these Tokyo, Taipei, Hong Kong, these fast paced cities where money and status and beauty and all of that meant more than anything else. And I had totally. never known this before. This was something yeah. that was that was very, very strange to me. And um, I remember at the time, um, and I, this is probably still happening, obviously that the boys were, were way more valued than we were, you know, yeah. I, I had yeah. a management company, um, uh, in entertainment that 
had signed all of these young hot boys and, you know, boys by nature are all, always going to be, um, uh, not more famous, but more coveted mm-hmm. because yep. women, women are good fans. Women are great fans. They'll wait outside the hotel for 18 hours to see you walk <laughs> to your car, right? Men, men don't do that. Right. Like, right. Not, not generally, right. There's, yeah. there's guys sprinkled here and there, but it's, it's not what you think. It's women who do that. And so yeah. The men are looked at as as something that is more coveted to be or have, you know, that status. And so I remember working with some of the biggest Chinese stars, you know, movies and w- women and having real heart to hearts with them about, mm. you know, how they feel in the industry and what they do and, and how they move in life. And I remember I was doing this movie with this very famous Chinese actress. And I said, she said, what are you going to do tonight? I said, I think I'm going to go see a movie. Um, and she goes with who? And I said, by myself, there was a little art house theater in this small little place in Hong Kong. And I would like sneak in there on my own and watch art house movies. And I was so happy. Yeah. And she looked at me and she went, you're going to a movie by yourself. (laughs) And I went, yeah. And she goes, Oh my God, I would never do that. And I said, because you're so famous. And she said, no, because I don't have the confidence Oh, okay. How sad. Yeah. 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 One of the most famous Chinese pop star actresses in, in Chinese culture is yeah. telling me she doesn't have the confidence to do anything on her own. And I remember that broke my heart so much because I was in an industry where I watched girls sell their souls to the devil. Mm to be Mm -hmm. famous and to have the things that they ultimately wanted in life. Right. Um, But in watching it, I remember thinking, will you be happy in the end? You're going to get everything you want because you're pretty men like you and they're going to give you what you want and you're going to give them what they want. But I remember looking at them and feeling so much sadness inside and going, Mm. get there and you're going to be so empty. Yeah. It's going to be worth it because you didn't, you didn't do it on your own. Right. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like, and maybe for the wrong reasons also, because, you know, the pursuit of fame and money and all of that, ultimately, yeah, that's not very fulfilling, right? It's empty. There's no, it's empty. There's, yeah. no, there's no real value in it, you know, inside, right? right. You get all right. these other things, you have a nice, convenient life, you make money, you do all these other things, but um, there's so much that goes missing from it. And so- mm-hmm. I remember thinking and taking that very important lesson when I was there as a very young kid, you know, 19 and thinking, I, 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 I can never be that. I can never wow. allow that to happen to me because my freedom and who I am and what I stand for is so much bigger than this industry. And, and it's the reason why I use this industry to do everything that I do now. I work in legislation. Right. I work for child abuse and neglect in the United States. I work on animal rights. I, I mean, There's so much that I want to do. And this industry has given it to me. But the lessons were very, very hard. And I remember it's not even May that I had the confidence. It's that I knew my purpose was bigger than what was in front of me. But that's pretty huge, Maggie, at 19, to already see that and recognize it and then be able to say, you know what, I don't want to be that. So you were able to actually recognize that. At 19, that's... That's kind of huge. It was, um, I think it was bigger than me. I think that yeah. was, there was some divinity that happened. I think that I have these angels and I think that I have protection. And, oh, I, I, love that. and I remember, and I, I really want to make sure that women, especially young women who are, who I'm sure love your show, understand that there are going to be people. I mean, some of the things that were said to me when I was coming up, so to speak, I had this boyfriend who, when we got together, he wasn't an actor and neither was I. And then we were together and then we both got into acting and then all of a sudden we were famous and we weren't famous when we met, you know, we had no clue what that life was. And uh, uh, we had a match, the same manager at the time. And I remember, I'll never, ever forget this. He pulled me aside. He had been drinking and we were all at dinner And we had broken up, me and this actor. And he pulled me aside and he said, Maggie, what are you doing? What are you doing? Come on, just get back with him. Because I guess the guy, uh, he he was brokenhearted about the breakup. I mean, so was I. It doesn't matter who did the breaking up. I mean, it still hurts regardless of Of how it happened. So he said, you know, he's really sad. And this manager loved this guy more than anything. I mean, he was just like, he's he's everything, right? Okay. 
so he says to me, you know, you should really just, just get back together with him. And I said, uh, no, I, no, I don't want to, I, it, it's over and, and that's okay. You know, I'm going to move on. He's going to move on. It's going to be fine. And he looked at me and he said, Maggie, come on, you will never be anything but his girlfriend. Oh, no, yeah. he did not. Yeah, he did. Oh. oh, my God. What did he you said, say? Or were you in said, just such he shock? Said, so you might as well just be that. Oh, yeah. So get back. Oh, together. My yeah. God. So let me let me tell you. So I, I looked at him and I remember I was so angry, oh. but I wouldn't let him get to me. And I said, um, thank you for your um, opinion, but I disagree. And I walked away and I'll never forget. It was, I wow. know, it was six years later or whatever, when I got Mission Impossible and I <laughs> left, which by the way, I didn't get it through them, of course. Oh, thank God. When I, yeah, because they didn't care about me. But yeah. when I got Mission Impossible and I came to the States and it was announced, they never called me to say congratulations. They never, I never heard a word from people that no. had represented me for six years. You know why? Pride, ego. Because they weren't happy for me. Yeah, of course. Exactly. Okay. And by the way, I was one of the only girls in the company and they didn't, they didn't want my success. They didn't care if I had success. They only cared if the boys had success. Oh. And so what I fought through watching these boys just get their asses kissed day in and day out. I mean, I'd be on yeah. movies with guys, pop stars, mate, who are sitting there and the assistant would come over the, the, the girl and they'd go, and she, and I was like, what, this is extraordinary. What's happening here? And I watched this girl, this little girl and put water to his mouth and he tip his head back like a fledgling bird. Wait, wait, he Maggie, you, you, bro wait, you broke, broke up for a second. What did they put in the mouth? The, his water bottle. Oh my God. He, he was hands free. He tip his head back and she'd pour it and he'd drink. Uh, and then she'd go. And I'm like, are you kidding me right now? And it's not because he, his hands were like full or like what? No, he just oh, wanted no, to he be served. He wanted to be served. Well, he was looking in the mirror. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Just doing that. Just oh feathering, my God. Feathering his hair. And so I'm watching all this stuff. And I, and I remember, you know, on another movie, there were some guys and they'd never done a movie before, but they were pop stars and they were in the movie. And we were on stage promoting it in like Malaysia or some country that wasn't Hong Kong or China. And, and I, we, we all get on stage and we file on stage and two of the movie studio women gra grabbed me by the arm and sort of pulled me back a little. And I thought they wanted to tell me something. They wouldn't let me stand next to, I had to be behind. <gasps> oh yeah. Oh, come on. You're a little too far forward. He needs, to, oh, no. he needs to be ahead of you. When was this? What year was this? This was all of 1998 to 2005. Oh my God. I mean, I feel like you're talking about the, like the 1920s or something oh, or like right? the 1800s or something. Like, it's so ass backwards in some ways in Asia, you know, where they, they, they don't value it. I mean, in the entertainment industry, honestly, there are true artists like directors and people who see talent in, in women, you know, yeah. these women, like the Maggie Chung's of the world. And I know yeah. Maggie, she's a friend. So like, I mean, the talent is, is undeniable. For Outside sure. Outside of that level of respect of an actress, they treat the rest of the women, like, and by the way, Maggie's been mistreated, and so have the top actresses. But yeah, um, outside of that, you know, women are just commodity. I mean, if they can make these men money, if they can make companies money, they'll use them. But they don't have any respect for them. They care no respect. That's care the about their journey or their dream. Yeah, right, right. Oh. so so obviously, seeing all that being treated that way directly, mm -hmm. you, that shaped you clearly. Uh, that I'm sure that made you a lot stronger. Yeah in terms of sticking up for yourself and standing up for yourself. Yeah. Well, and so grateful I, because think about if I was that person who was just told how amazing I was every five minutes. I mean, I would be a, I mean, I'd be a jerk. Know, I would be the biggest jerk on the planet. <laughs> totally. I really would. I mean, and so and I don't want to be a jerk. So I'm yeah. still like, when I got to Hollywood and I was doing Mission Impossible, you know, I worked for Jackie for many years and Jackie so Chan, was yep. his management company. And he was really hard on all of us, you know, because yeah. he worked his ass off. He got, right. he earned what he earned through his own merit. And he, he right. expected us to do the same. And I respect that a lot. He wasn't going to carry yeah. anybody. Right. So I came from that school 
And then the school of like punishment where everybody just, you know, didn't value you. And then I come yeah. to the States and, you know, people are very positive. here. I mean, they're very sort of, I mean, whether it's real or not, doesn't matter, but yeah. what comes out of their mouth is that's so great. You're a you know, all this sort of stuff, all these compliments. And I, I was on mission impossible. I remember thinking I'm getting all these compliments and I'm like, so why, why are you saying? <laughs> I, 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 I couldn't even, I couldn't fathom that they were talking to me. That wow. they were talking to me. What a great job. I don't think Jackie said that to me once in the entire time Never. I was managed by. No. Whoa. No. That's pretty no. harsh. But but he's also trying to mold you into someone who's gonna make it or mold right. you into someone who's earned it so that Which when he did there. Which he did, right? Which I mean did. it. Yeah. Which did, okay. His work ethic. I've only seen two people who work at that level, Tom Cruise and Jackie. Oh, interesting. Those are the hardest working men in the business, which is why yeah. so successful. You right. know, like they have right. a work ethic like, like nothing I've ever seen. Okay. Yeah. So let me ask you this then, because some people mm -hmm. would get into that environment, like you yeah. going to Hollywood and all of a sudden everybody's like saying how great you are and like, oh my God, we love you. We love you. You yeah. know, you always yeah. hear that. Yeah. So some people would fall for that and absolutely fall into yeah. that trap and become you know, an egotistical monster, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, and you yeah. see that. Monster is well, a great word. <laughs> I mean, you know, and I see it too. I've interviewed no, it's true, these people. It's true, it's true. There are, there are monsters. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah. I've, believe me, trying to interview those kinds of people is just, I seriously would rather like go just yeah. like give myself, you know, no, a bunch know. of paper cuts. Yes. Um, but for why is it then Maggie? I mean, because you're, you're cool. I mean, clearly. So yeah. something in you, then you must have said to yourself, I'm not going to become a monster. You know, I'm going to stay who I am. So there's something very grounded about you. So that has to come from somewhere. Well, I will tell you one experience. First of all, I have a mom who's the most hardworking, uh, humble person that I've ever known in my life. And she was oh. a, an immigrant and a refugee and came to the States and had nothing and earned her yeah. way. I mean, there's really no way to look at her journey and say, somehow I'm not lucky or I'm out. I mean, that woman yeah. It's yeah. just, so there, there was that example. And then in entertainment, I did my, my first job was a TV series that I filmed in Beijing in 1998. Mm -hmm. And it was, um, one of the hardest things I've ever done because I didn't, you know, I didn't speak Mandarin. I'm around all these people, you know, there's China actors, Taiwanese actors, Hong Kong actors. And there was a, a very famous Hong Kong actor who was so mean to me. <laughs> he was so mean to me. What did he do? Just awful. Just the things he would say mean things. He was dismissive and, Ugh. and angry and huffy and would go out of his way to make my life more difficult. Oh boy. And okay. I remember watching this and feeling very hurt by it. Cause I'm a kid. I don't, you know, I don't understand why he has to go there, but, uh, I watched it and I remember the Taiwanese actors and the actors from China really being so kind to me and helping foster like what it is I wanted to do and cared about me and all of that. And seeing the stark difference between them and mm. like I said, how fostering they were with me and this guy. And, and by the way, the talents weren't even matched. I mean, the people who were kind to me had talent, you know, coming out of everything. Oh. And this guy was like, eh, it was okay. Okay. I'm not incredibly talented by any measure. So I, I remember watching that as a really young person and, and being so hyper aware of how, how it made me feel. Mm. And I remember saying to myself at that time, I will never, ever make anyone feel the way this guy has made me feel. Mm. I will never be exclusive of people. I will never treat them like they're beneath me. I will never, yeah. ever be this person because I feel so bad right now. I would do anything to feel different, but I don't have the confidence to feel different. Right. And I remember on that series, he, I had a last straw. There was some, some area where I had a last straw and mind you, I'm not an actress. This is my first job. So I have no say there's no, there is a hierarchy and it's yeah. very definitive and I'm not a part of it. I'm like at the bottom, right? Right. Which is totally fine. But he did something that was really, really, really awful to me. And I can't remember what it was. And I, I lost, I, I completely lost it. And you know those <laughs> frustrated tears when yes, you're crying yes. so hard because you're hyperventilating because you cannot, <laughs> you just don't know what to do anymore. Yeah. So I remember he came up to me and said, hey, why are you freaking out? You know, and, and tried to do that whole thing of like, oh, what's, what's, what's going, you know, when somebody makes you crazy and then looks at you and then goes, why are you What's wrong with you? So yeah. Crazy? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it was one of those. It's so gaslighting, I mean, total gaslighting, right? Yes. So it was one of those moments. 
And I remember I whipped around as this like child, you know, I'm like 19. And I went, you don't get to ask me how I am. You don't get to check on me. You're the reason I'm so miserable. I hate you. I hate you. Oh, bravo. Get away from me and never come near me again. I hate (laughs) you. And I'm like screaming. I got in a van. I got to take him back to the hotel. And here's what's here. Here's the crazy thing about bullies. And he was bully. (laughs) Oh, yeah. The next oh. day I came to set. He was never mean to me again. <gasps> you stood up. You stood up to a bully. You know why? Because they're cowards. They're cowards. At the end of the day, That's they're cowards. He, he didn't treat yes. anyone else with status like he treated me. He treated right. me that way because he could. Yes. I didn't have any defenses against him. Because he saw you as weaker. I had weaker. no fame. I had no people. You know, but that more. proves that, you know, bullies, they are cowards. So you have to stand up to them when, when push t- comes to shove. I mean, we, yes. all, we obviously yes. can't always do it. Yes. But when push comes to shove, listen, I just did that. Oh, did uh, you? oh right. well, it well to someone who is, you know, um, wow. uh, someone who is a known bully in our country. Wow. <clears throat> um, and I put out a video and it got, wow. it's gotten 180,000 hits so far. Oh, and because I, because I'm standing up to you know, this negative rhetoric and I, I can't take it, you know? Yeah. And so, can't because, take- you know, yeah, I mean, because right now the, you know, atmosphere, uh, the environment is not so good for us, you know, as oh. Asian Americans. No. Um, and you know, that, that kind of negativity has to be stopped. Oh, I so, have to send you the blog that I wrote about this. I saw, no, no, no. Oh, I was actually going to read oh. part of it, but oh. I was going to bring it up okay. because you confronted a bully as well. Well, somebody who was trying to be like a racist, Yes, a right? Racist. This was when you were still in Europe. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And the title of this blog is messing with the wrong Asian, which I love. Um, exactly. Well, yeah. I expect you to say nothing and be demure and be, you know, sorry. Stereotypical. That's, sorry. Yeah. You know what? That's why I do the show. And that's why I speak out more than, um, the average person, because I yeah. do want to break the stereotype. Absolutely. It's bullshit. You know, it's just like, Absolutely. no, we're not Great. delicate little quiet flowers. We no. will fight back. Cause we have to. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah. let's, let's, yeah. let's talk about the story because it's great because you, you know, you actually did, you know, you were confronted, well, not confronted, but you were witness and part of somebody who was treating mm-hmm. you badly because mm-hmm. they thought you were Chinese. And this yeah. was during the COVID, yep. you know, the growing COVID problem yep. in Europe. Yes. So you yeah. were like going into a sauna. Yep. You see this guy. Tell Okay. So tell us the story. So, um, my hairdresser, who's, um, this amazing, you know, we've been working for months. And one of the things we would do for peace is we would meet at the sauna, you know, yeah. and the saunas in this country are co-ed. They don't do private saunas in men's and women's locker rooms. Okay. They just don't, I don't know. I'm way more comfortable when it's separated, but yeah, same. <laughs> this didn't do it. So anyway, um, I, she texts me and says, I'll meet you up there. I'm like, great. So she gets there before me. I get there and I see her trying to get her Zen on, but I can tell she's a little irritated. Right. Cause I, I can see her doing this and like trying to close her eyes. And I, I look over and I see that there's a guy in the sauna. It's exactly like why we don't want guys. Right. Sauna, right. 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 Exactly. She's clearly it's trying creepy to actually. It's kind of weird. Yeah. You know, yeah, and she's, yeah, a, yeah. she's a pretty redhead. She's, she's mm-hmm. very beautiful. And so of course he was trying to shout her. So I come in, I see them exchanging something and I don't know what it is. And then I come in and you know, he falls very silent and he, he's staring at me and giving me this sort of side eye up and down. I'm like, so I smile at him. He doesn't smile back, whatever. I start talking to her and then he sort of quickly gets up and exits. Right. And he leaves. And once she sees that he's gone, she's like, I have to tell you what just happened. And so I was putting my stuff down and it's a glass door. And he's like, he sees me and he's like, uh Oh, you know, and she goes, uh Oh, what? And he's like, maybe, And she goes, maybe what? And he goes, maybe Chinese. So Corona. And she goes, first of all, no. Second of (laughs) all, like, I love that my white girlfriend couldn't have had it. Yeah. Oh, no. But if, yes. Right. 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 Up on her during COVID. And that's okay. But somehow (sighs) I'm this. So I was like, I'm going to kill them. But I'm like, you know, it's fine. He's gone. But he had left already. Yeah. He had left. Uh So as luck would have it, when, when we finally leave, 
I see him exiting another sauna that's sort of like in another room before there's two at this gym. Yeah. Because yeah. of course he had to change saunas because. Oh, because of the I diseased woman. Asian woman. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. Chinese woman who was going to give him Corona. Right. And yeah. so I see him and I, my blood is boiling and I mm. passed him and then I forgot my robe or my key or something. So I had to double back and I'm like, you know what? Just breathe. It's fine. And so I did, I confronted him and I got a little bit uncomfortably close for him, which was nice, you know, yeah, it was good. still a safe distance, but for him, because you know, yeah. I was trying no, no, no. To good girl. Good. he was very uncomfortable and I was so pissed. And I said, well, for, first of all, first of all, with your racist bullshit, not every Asian person is Chinese. So let's yeah. like, just clear that up first. Okay. Yeah. There's a, there's, there's actually 48 Asian nations. So, yeah. okay. There, there's right. that. And so I said, and, and I, and I'm not, I'm not Chinese, but if I were, mm -hmm. it does not mean that I have COVID. It means that you and I have the same fear about this global pandemic that's happening. That's right. all it means. All it means is that you're a living being, I'm a living being, and we both have this worry. And I was like, you're not allowed to use COVID as an excuse for your innate racism. Mm. So you can then put me in a box because that's how you feel about me anyway. Yeah. You know? sort of thing. Yep. And, yep. I, and then I told him, I said something like when I left, I said, um, you know, when you do get it from a white person while you're busy targeting Asians, I said, uh, oh, I hope you make it dude. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was okay. That's classic real asshole. And then I said, and I, I called him an asshole, like during my little diatribe and then as I was leaving, he goes, you, you know what? And I turned around and he goes, you're an asshole too. And I was like, oh, good one. <laughs> <laughs> See, this is the thing. When you surprise them yes. by fighting back like that, it, it ca catches them off guard because they don't expect it. They don't expect and it. And then you realize that they have nothing to them. There's nothing. no substance there. Maybe. Because they know they're- say to me. Exactly. When I said he all has, those things, he was like, uh, I mean, completely right. stumped. Right, right. You know, but not all Asians will do what I did. Because no. they don't. And, and also, by the way, just to be clear, like, even, I don't even want to do that. I, I don't want to have to be that person. Like, I'm not put here to be your educator. Like, right. screw you. Why do you get to take my time? Right, right. right. But in this moment, I remember thinking to myself, uh-uh, I'm not doing this for me because, like, I – Exactly. This guy. Who's this guy? I don't care right. about this guy. But I'm doing this because the next agent he comes across, he's going to think twice, and I'm going to, I'm not going to let him mess with that person. Right. Exactly. Who's not long enough to say something. Exactly. Because yeah. right now, Maggie, it's Asian Pacific American Heritage Month, right? So this is yeah, a time to right. celebrate, you know, our culture, mm -hmm. our heritage, our mm -hmm. background, everything. And we have to remember 150 years ago when the Chinese were brought over to help build the railroad, they were yeah. looked upon as subhuman. They were given no rights. They had That's nothing, exactly I mean, right. nothing. And they had to remain silent because mm -hmm. they had no rights. Mm -hmm. We have Absolutely. to take that lesson and apply it yes. now saying, listen, that's not going to happen again. And we have to now rise up and speak up and speak out and educate. And it, you know, yeah. knowledge is power. So when right. people don't know what they're saying right. or what they're doing is offensive, they're right. just, they're going to keep doing it because they're just never going to know. That's right. So yeah. it is up to us. You oriental oh, and you're like, I'm not a piece chocolate. of furniture. Yeah. I'm not a rug. I'm yeah. not a rug, but okay, interesting. And I'm just going to educate you in this moment. I did it to a director and yeah. he goes, you know, I never knew that. I said, I know you didn't know that. Right. That's why I'm upset with you, but I'm telling you. Exactly. Exactly. That that's, that, and, that's, the, that's the case. And that's why I keep on doing these interviews when I'm asked to do these interviews about the racism right now, the xenophobia, because mm -hmm. I feel like if people don't know it's happening, then, you know, we can't blame them. They're not hearing about it. So That's we right. have to talk about it. We have to bring up these stories. And so mm -hmm. that people then realize, oh my God, I had no idea this was a problem. Right. Right. Well, exactly. And, and the other, the other issue being that because we've been silent, as you brought up that point, our history has been such that, I mean, not within our own cultures, but outside of our own cultures, especially when we're dealing with Western cultures, right. 
we've we've always minimized ourselves, yep, and we've definitely. always been quiet and silent. And this there's been a long history of this, and I think that we're just coming out of that right now yeah. to be able to find our voices. Yes, I think generationally, it's time. I think that I think that everybody you know who right now believes that their parents and grandparents you know came here and fought for something that you deserve to be in this position now to yep. have a voice, that's whether right. they did or they didn't, that's gone, that's done. You know, in the United States, the African-American community, the Latin community, they've done a very good job going, hey, excuse me, yep. you know, here we are, here's our contribution, this is why we matter, blah, 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 and they're so right to, Asians haven't done, we haven't done that yet. No, no, it but hasn't happened yet. here's where I keep on saying to my viewers and listeners, if this moment is now, this this yes. tra this crisis yes. that we're faced with, not just the health crisis, but this xenophobia, yes. this this should be a turning point. This is a tipping point. This and if we don't galvanize our power and Thank come you. together yep. and really fight and make mm -hmm. this a turning point, I yes. don't know what else will you know inspire people. That's to, right. To, to move and, and to create yeah. this movement. So, well, and you're so right because it's when you're being targeted that you can turn the tide. Exactly. Right. And one of the ways that we change the stereotype on Asians is through media. And that's why people like you are so important. We're doing um, a series of town halls for this whole month. There's an assembly member um, in California, he's a representative of San Francisco. Mm -hmm. uh, the Asian American caucus within the California assembly is doing a, um, you know, four town halls every right. Friday this month. And I, I think I'm going to be joining, I think the, the fourth and last town hall in May right. about the future of Asians and where we go in our communities and, ha and how we represent ourselves properly. And people ask me this as well, too, even in entertainment, like, well, how do Asians be, you know, be taken more seriously in this that, and the other? And I said, it, it's not only in what you do, it's also in what you don't do. Mm. So remember the things that they're offering, sorry, you as an Asian, you don't take them. Yeah. You say no. Right. You say, no, I'm not going to play the dry cleaner. No, I'm not going to play the dim sum guy. No, I'm not going to play the delivery guy. No, right. I'm not going to play that stereotype. Sorry. Yeah. You know, and that's the way it's going to have to be because it's, it's not just what we do. It's also what we don't do. That yeah. speaks volumes. Yeah. You know, if people want to marginalize you, all they need are a few people who will allow it yep. and it's out there. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. But moving into our power means that we can go into these rooms and know that we're exceptional and know that we have something to offer and know that, you know, anything less is, is unacceptable. Right. You know, and, and thank you very much. You don't want me now, but you will. Yeah, you exactly. Because I have a lot to offer. Well, let me ask you this then, Maggie. I mean, you've obviously been in Hollywood for a while now and done yeah. very, very well. And and I'm sure you've gotten those offers of playing, you know, the stereotypical role. And I remember 13 years ago in our interview, you said to me, you would often get people saying, wow, your English is so good. You know, yeah. that comment, which yeah. we, we've all gotten, right? Studio heads, yeah. yeah. Um, Educated people. Yeah, so, yeah. but we have seen an improvement and media- yeah. And entertainment, like it or not, it is the way that people see the world, right? Yes. And so representation right. matters. So yes. we were seeing a, a tremendous improvement, right? With Crazy Rich mm -hmm. Asians and Fresh Off the Boat. And then of course, Parasites yes. swept the Oscars, you know, all this stuff. So yes. like we were on a high, um, yes. you know, and we were on this correct trajectory. Yeah, do you, agreed. do you feel like even with this virus and this xenophobia and all that, do you still have hope that that's going to continue? I mean, you know, uh, I mean, if, yes, it affects yes, your yes, career I too. Do. Yes, yeah. I do. Because although, you know, um, there was a quote that Mindy Colleen had, I don't know wh where she said it, but I read it. It was really funny. And she said, you know, they're not changing because they believe we deserve this. They're, they're changing out of fear. <laughs> because they're worried that they're going to be the people who didn't hire the Asian or di weren't diverse or whatnot. I would build on that. I would say that, you know, of course, of course, it should matter why they're changing. But I actually think it is what she says. But it's also that we now live in a global marketplace. Yeah. And the truth is, yeah. you know, not all of your stereotypical Hollywood stars travel as well as other people can and do. Right. And so because there's an opportunity for people to make money, they are going to be inclusive of us. They right. didn't make crazy rich Asians because they were like, it's time. Yeah. <laughs> You know, Asians, Asians need a platform. No, they did it because it was a wildly, wildly unpopular book. Exactly. And they knew it was a shoe in to yeah. make, 
have a certain opening. They did the numbers. They yeah. knew. And Kevin at the time, Sujihara, who was the head of Warner Brothers, who was obviously let go because of his whole affair scandal yeah. thing that yeah, happened, yeah, sadly, yeah. very mm. sadly. Yeah. Um, because he's a great, he's a good guy. He's a damn good studio head. So yeah. I'm really upset that that befalled him. You know, because it's, it's he's a man. And yeah. Well, men are stupid. I know they can't keep it in their pants. Like, yeah. I, well, you know, it is what it is. Like, wait, 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 you'll sleep with me? Oh, I'm gonna just put my whole career at risk. <laughs> Like, what? Uh, no, exactly. Because they're not thinking with this brain. Uh, they're thinking with the other one. Yeah. Well, yeah. their first brain, they're thinking with their first That's brain. That's okay. They are. So, yeah. yeah. So, okay. which is anyway. like, <laughs> but Kevin, Kevin was an Asian studio head. And yeah. that was really important huge. at the time. Huge. Um, it was huge. The only other Asian studio head that I know of was Chris Lee, who was an amazing studio. He was a head of uh, Columbia TriStar. He's a very good friend. He's now in Hawaii working at the University of Hawaii film program. He's trying oh, wow. to get young filmmakers up and going Asian, Asian Americans. Cool. He's a great guy, but we don't have a lot of representatives in that space. So yeah. the mix of Kevin and the mix of the fact that they ran the numbers and believe me, you, they ran the numbers. They knew what it would make them, yeah. um, meant that a movie like that could happen. Right. And, and that's so for me, I, I love John. I think he's a great director. I spoke to him. I read that script. I thought that the script needed a lot of work. Um, I didn't think it was a great script, but yeah. I said, but I told John, I thought he was a great director. And I said, no matter what's going to happen, you're going to fix it. And you're going to make a great movie. Did he so want we, you to be in it? No, you oh. know, we, we spoke, there wasn't a, there wasn't anything for me to do in that movie. And there was, there wasn't, I had no desire to be in that movie, yeah. but I, I absolutely, um, supported him in leading the charge on this. And, and I, and I really, I really think he's a great guy. And so when we spoke about him, I mean, the last thing I said to him was like, I think you're going to kill it. Congratulations. I can't, I can't wait to see this and I can't wait for you to have a hit. Like this is going to be really important for the community. And he was like, thank you. And we'll work together at some point. I'm like, we definitely will. Don't worry about it. Yeah. So we had that amazing conversation. And then, and then, you know, the movie came out and did really well. And, you know, and it sort of changed the landscape in terms of now they definitely know they can make some money with things like this. Right. But what I, what I, what I really want to see is outside of casting an Asian movie because everyone in it's Asian. So there's yeah. really no opportunity to cast M- Emma Stone again. Yeah. In <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Or Tilda um, Swinton. Yeah. Sweet. Or Tilda Swinton. Uh-huh. Um, but, oh, um, hi, you know, puppy. Oh, what's she, the, the, what's this one's name? Her name is Nevea, so that's heaven spelled backwards. Oh, Nevea. Oh, sweet girl. Oh, mm, oh I, I know. Oh, oh look, you. she's like, Mommy, get off. Oh, he can't take it. The boy, he cannot. You cannot. Come, come here. Come, let oh, everybody see. Oh, where are my babies? I think they're Hi, all look at, it. look at this guy. Oh, look at you. Who's this? He, he wore a bow tie for you. <gasps> oh, what saying. a handsome boy. Who's this? This is Romeo. Oh my God, Romeo, what a handsome boy. Seriously, what a handsome boy. Oh, look, see, my little one is like, who are you talking to? Come here, come here, come over here. Come here, come on. Let's see. You see her? Oh, come on. <laughs> so oh. I rescued her um, almost four years. Oh, here comes my other one now. Um, oh. I rescued the little one about four years ago from a oh. rescue up in um, the valley. Oh, cool. And then um, Eggy, you can't see her right now. Can you see her? No, you can only yeah. see her. Here. I saw her walk by. Here. Let's oh, there, oh. there you are. There oh. you are. She's, Is she older? She's going to be 13. Oh, wow. Yeah. What so, a beauty. I know. Oh. I mean, we love our rescues. We love our rescues. We love our rescues. That's the only way to go. It's the only, I get so mad I'm when so I hear. Hey, I'm so sick of it. When I hear people getting like their freaking like. Pure buying dog. dogs. No, why would you buy a life? Why? Why would you purchase a life? That makes no sense. I know. I know. Yeah. I mean, rescue because rescues know they've been rescued, and so they're so grateful and they're but so that, loving. I mean, I, I can't. Best. I would die without these guys. Yeah, I don't know. I would die. No, no, no. I would die. I don't know what to do without and you. Dogs are the happiest beings on the planet right now because they're like, you're oh. always home. This is so awesome. I can't believe it. Don't you feel like there are spiritual teachers? Totally. These guys. It, they really are. Oh no, they that's teach us how to be present and how to be joyful and, and great the little things. Yeah. I just I living in the moment. I yeah. mean, and yeah, no, 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 no. They're the best. That's why dog is God backwards, right? That's the famous line. Yeah. But oh yeah, I love that. That's I, so I do too because I think it's totally I, I, true. Um, oh, I, love, I love a good dog segue. But no, my last my last uh, thought on that was just the the next step and something that I've been trying to do in Hollywood for a very long time is 
not be cast as the Asian girl in the Asian role in the Asian thing. Right. It's going into these rooms where they're not even considering you and trying to change their minds. Yeah. And that's been um, the challenge I've decided to take on. Okay. Because I, I believe that that really does move us forward. Absolutely. Um, it really does. And, you know, I, I'd like to see studios now give Asian Americans um, – starring roles in big movies yes. and not just their own movies, Asian movies, but that's put them in prominent positions in bigger movies. That's when they're actually changing. Yeah. That's when it changes, when it's, when it's, when it's someone else instead of Scarlett Johansson. Right. Or, or it's someone else, but you, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And it's like nothing again. I mean, Scarlett's great. It's not about her, but, but uh, it really is about considering people who you wouldn't consider before. And the only way to do that as Asian Americans is to go in those rooms and be better than the rest. That's better, it. Yep. Better than the rest. But also, but also, you know, audiences have to support that too, yes. because it is about the money. That's if, right. If pick, people right. don't buy the tickets and go, oh my gosh, that was Eggy knocking, almost knocking oh, over my computer. Eggie. Oh, Eggy, Eggy. <laughs> You're, you're totally well, stuck on my computer. Eggie, then it's okay. Oh my God. Eggie. Oh, she's like 90 pounds. So she's not going to move very oh easily. My oh my Eggie, I know you're trapped. Oh my God. This is hilarious. This has never happened during the show. She's, she's um, trapped. Behind, well, of course it's happening with me. <laughs> Which is why it's so it, awesome. <laughs> it makes so much sense. Oh my God. That's hilarious. She's like, I'm just going to screw up mommy's show right now. Um, so no, I think, I think as George Takei, I, I once interviewed and he was talking about the importance of community support, you know, from your sure. community. Sure. And he's sure. like, you know, when I would go to the theater, if it was an August Wilson play, the theater mm -hmm. would be packed with African-Americans, you know, watching the play. But Absolutely. if I went to a David Henry Huang play, sprinkling of Asians. So mm -hmm. not supporting, you know, the, the craft and the art and the artist. So I think that is a very valid point as well. We can yes. talk the talk, but we have to walk the walk. You know, we can say yes. we yes. want to be supportive. Mm -hmm. We can say we want more representation, but if we don't support it, mm, 100%. you know, yeah. 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 Also have enough, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? Have enough love for self that you want to go into a movie and see someone that looks like you rather than someone who looks like your classmate. Right. Because exactly. that's part of it too. It is. And that's it's all again, that, that I, minimization of ourselves. I like think we'd rather see a white girl than we would rather see someone who looks like our sister. Yeah. Yeah. And it's all part of getting in touch with our Asian identity, which I that's think is starting to happen. Yeah. I really think yeah. I see it in younger people for sure, who yeah. are a lot more proud of their heritage. So, um, yeah. Even yeah. the simplest thing where I'm seeing more Asian Americans using their ethnic name rather than taking on a oh, Western wow. name. You that's know what I mean? Cool. I, see, I see that a lot more with younger wow. people. So that, I think that's an interesting trend. It's very telling. Oh, I love that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. But anyway, well, God, Maggie, I could talk to you forever about. It's so easy with you. I it's know, just, and I have you know, to tell you, I mean, we're we're the same. You know, we're we're cut from the same cloth. I think we are. Yeah, so. <laughs> we're the same. We're like soul sisters. We're, we're just the same. We're totally the same. And I'll tell you, I mean, there are some some really big time famous interviewers have been on TV for many years and it's not even remotely as easy. Oh, thank you. So, well, really you know, you. like you, uh, uh, this is how we are the same. Um, I believe in authenticity. Yeah, so do I. And, um, I am who I, I am exactly who I am Yeah, you are on camera, off camera. It doesn't well, matter. This is yeah. who I am. And that's how I like to connect with people. And yes. when I connect with somebody who's the same, this is yes. what happens. Yeah, yeah. that's exactly yeah, it. It's awesome. Well, and you can't fake the funk. I mean, authenticity is not something that you, no. you can't, can't acquire it. And that's no. why it's valuable. Exactly. You know? Cause most exactly. things in life you can buy, right? Yep. Yep. Can't buy that. I mean, fake yeah. it till you make it in, in many other areas, but not, not for me in this, no. it, with this, especially with the mission of the show. So exactly. I so appreciate the fact that you gave me this much. Look at this. You gave me so much more time than the last time. It's great. Well, you know, it's nice when you're not in a junket style setting I and know. everyone's like, telling me you only have this. I'm like, Oh God, here we go. Yeah. I know. I know. I know. That, yeah. That's really tough. So I, I do have to, to tell you, you know, I apologize for those types of settings. It's, um, 
it's all studio run and it's very, yeah. you know, it's like we have 48 hours to do every outlet in Asia. And you're like, Hold, are you kidding? I you know. know. And it's so exhausting for you guys. But I did. I remember I was so appreciative by, by the fact that your, you and your team gave me that time because it oh, really was such a meaningful interview for the show that I was doing at the time. So yeah, exactly. and this is going to be exactly the same. People are going to love so this happy. interview. Oh, um, I'm so happy. Yeah. Oh, and I. Makes- my day. And honestly, Maggie, and I love the fact that you are a fellow Asian American woman who's willing to speak out and be courageous and bold and just be honest, because that's what we need to do right now, especially we need, now. We need to inspire each other, yeah. right? I know that for me, I'm inspired by the women. I don't need some big spiritual leader or some you know, author or poet who, although I appreciate those people, yeah. I look at you know, your friend, Perry, my COO, Amanda, the women around me who work with me every day, they're so inspiring to me. I shot a campaign for my, you know, my new collection this past season. I used all the women in my life. I didn't, I mean, I hired like two fitness models, you know, to do a, a little bit more of the athletic stuff, but I brought my sisters in. I brought my friend's friend who's a teacher, you know, oh, I brought nice. woman who works with horses. I used all of my staff, yeah. everybody who inspires me were, were in these ads because that's the real stuff. That's right? the real deal. Like, exactly. I'm not, I'm not inspired by Estee Lauder's ad that has like one Chinese model, one white <laughs> model, one redhead model and one black model. Yeah. Oh, like, Oh, thank you so much. Now I, f- I can really relate to your product now that you've given me the best in every category. Right. right. It's so contrived and it's so obvious. It's, it's so like, we're not stupid. It's, so obvious. it's not diverse. It's, it's the, the prettiest girl from every ethnicity. Exactly. That That's not real. It's no. not. Exactly. Yeah. You can include real women on a real level. And, yep. and if they're people you admire, then people are going to see the beauty in them through the photos. Absolutely. And people really did. So oh, it was, good. Yeah, I'm so glad. Good. Now, yeah. having said that, I would never say no to Oprah or Michelle Obama, but you know, that's totally different. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's very different. That's very different. Yeah. That's, that's next level. <laughs> that's next level. Yeah. Um, but Maggie, so, I have so enjoyed chatting with you and I hope I can see you face to face at some point when it's safe. I'd love to do that. Seriously. I'd love to do that. I think the next time we work together, we should do something face to face. I think so too. I think so yeah. too. And in the meantime, if we get a break to at least go out, I would yeah. let's go on a hike with our dogs. Oh, that would be great. Yeah. That would be great. My be dogs fun. every day. Oh. They're the most spoiled. I mean, you know, I hand make their food. Oh, you're one of those. Oh, I'm one of those. Every day we go on the hike, we come back. It's already ready. And it's been, (laughs) I may, it's been warmed by the sun. Uh, Wow, Maggie. I'm that person. I sprout their grains the night before. No, you do not. In, In cold vegetable broth that I made with the vegetables I boiled for their food. Okay, you know what? It's, it's a good it's thing a, I'm, I have headphones on because my dogs aren't hearing you know, this. Yeah. <laughs> like, they'd be pissed. Hear? Yeah, exactly. They'd be pissed. Yeah, they'd be pissed. No, uh, people want to come back as my dogs. Oh, totally. It, it, it's unbelievable. But you know what? What you put into them, you I get know. out of them. And I, I don't have sick dogs. Oh. I have the healthiest. It's cr- They have no health issues. They're yeah, just, you know what? Mine, who's about to turn 13, you know, she had yeah. a horrible first year of her life when I rescued her in Singapore, but she's been really healthy. And she's, st- oh. I got the second one because I wanted to keep her younger. Oh, that's and a very good idea. That totally works. Totally works. works. They play every day. I didn't believe that that was true nope. until I did it. I, so Nivea, who you yeah. just met, Nivea, yep. I got her when the love of my life, Caesar, my other shepherd, was still alive. He was um, 14. Yeah. Oh. So she was the love of his life for two years and laid with him when he died. I mean, like oh. she was there. It was, she brought him back to life. And people have told me, you know, sometimes younger dogs will do that. And I'm like, I don't know about that. You oh, know, totally with these two. My dog was so old. I thought, you know, he's just going to be annoyed. No, nope. he wasn't. Nope. Eggy like no. plays like a puppy with her now. Now she doesn't last very long, but she totally yeah, does it course. every day. Aww. Wait, wait, Aww. before I say goodbye. Oh my God. I almost forgot. I was listening to the Justin Long podcast that you did oh, with him, amazing. Well, which was, was great, it? which was great. Okay. He seems okay. like such a sweet guy. He by is the, way. the nicest. We've been friends since Die Hard. So. Right. Right. Okay. I, the only I, reason I bring it up is because you talked about your dog Scuba. 
Scuba, yeah. Yeah. I had a dog named Scuba. No, you did not. I have never met another person with that name for a dog. And when I heard that, I was like, shut up. What kind of dog was it? He, I rescued him in New York many, many okay. years ago. He's since passed. Um, a, la- a yellow lab. Mine was a pit bull with a patch over her eye. No, she was the sweet. Mine too. She had been, I mean, my girl, She when I rescued her, she had been shot three times. <gasps> Somebody was using her for target practice oh in their yard. No. And you know what the miracle of her, with scubas, my scuba story was, was that a neighbor during, you know, the middle of the night had snuck into the yard <gasps> of, um, I don't know if they were like, it's okay, babies. I don't know if they were drug dealers. Oh, oh someone at the door. Is someone at the um, door? I'm sure it's delivery. Yeah. yeah. Hey guys, it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. So, um, they had, they had untied her and snuck her out. Oh my God. Thank God for the neighbors. Of this very dangerous situation and tied her up outside of a rescue. <gasps> bloody with a note that said, no. my owners were mistreating me and I was snuck out and please oh take me God. and help me. And, and so I got her. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She's wow. passed already, but yeah, she, she had a rough time. And that's why we have to rescue because the I truth know. is we domesticated them. We put them in this situation and then we forget them. And, and then they're abused. My scuba, he he was owned by a family where the husband was abusing the wife. So there was a lot of domestic abuse. She finally had the courage to leave and go to a woman's shelter with her kids, but they couldn't take the dog. Of course, that's but, the problem with shelters exactly, in the U.S. Exactly. Yeah. But they were so afraid that the, the husband would, you know, take it out on the dog. That okay, they of course. Begged, they, take they begged a rescue to take him. And they were like, we don't have any more fosters. They're like, By the way, he would have he taken it out on the dog. Oh, for sure. But All they the begged this rescue. And so finally the people who run the rescue, they're like, yeah. okay, we'll take him in, but we can't make any guarantees of how long we can yeah. keep him. But right. I had just put in an application no to way. rescue a lab. But I said, no more than three years old, you know, female, it, preferable, blah, blah, blah. They're like, Hi, May. Um, we have a five-year-old yellow lab male. <laughs> I'm like, what? And they brought him over, and I'm like, I know. I was just like, yeah, there's not. But I brought him over. They brought him over, and I was like, yep, done deal. Yeah. May, you saved his life. I did. Had I he t- been left at home. Oh, he would have I mean, died. He would have, yeah, it would have been a bad situation. It would have been horrible. We have so. to do a whole nother thing on, you know, at some point about, you know, let's do a podcast just on animals so we can talk about rescue I and would, educate people more. Yeah, I just would more love on to. that and yeah. talk about spotlight certain groups yep. and really like sort of get I'm trying right now thing. to work on work on an app that's gonna benefit animals completely in the United States. So Ooh. I'm I'm working on this right now because I just I have a mind that thinks a certain way and I'm very solutions based. So I'm hoping that Oh, uh, I come up with something very clever that will um, kind of standardize adoption in the U.S. Yeah. Oh, so I love that. About, think about why we don't do certain things because they're confusing. Yeah. And not as easy as we want them to be. Well, so, here, here's the here's the worrisome part of this quarantine and, mm-hmm. and the crisis. Apparently, yeah. a, a report came out just the other day saying there might be a spike in animals being taken to shelters because people oh, won't yeah, be able to take care of them. So this is going to be another crisis that we'll face. It is so, going to be another crisis. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah. It is. So, um, so no, we should we should coordinate, seriously. I would love I would love to do that. Yeah. I would love, well, you know, you know, I'm down. Da- I'm know. I'm so down. <laughs> I could talk about animals and conservation all day long. Seriously, all day long. All day long. Yeah. No, so. Honestly, oh my goodness. Oh, who's so sweetie? This is just Nevaeh. Oh my god. She's a German Shepherd Border Collie mix. She's so pretty. Yeah, she was Very in a shelter. Pretty. I did this show called Designated Survivor yeah. and that our studio was across the street. You know, I remember we were driving to work one day and I look over and my driver had been my driver on a show called Nikita. Yeah, of course. Many years. So we had worked together for about seven years total. Oh, wow. So we knew each other very well and we loved each other very much. And he is an animal lover, probably may, maybe crazier than me, which is very hard <laughs> okay. to do. And so as we're driving to the studio for the first time on the pilot, I look over, I go, oh, oh, uh oh. He goes, I know, because there was a there was a there was a kill shelter, oh. a city shelter. Yeah. And I went, 
well, I'm going to have, now I got to go to the show. You can't go in. You can't go in without. I was like, uh, I gotta, yeah. And then I had a costume designer who was psycho like me. And she goes, Hey Mag, uh, are you eating lunch today? And I said, uh, I maybe like, what were you thinking? She goes, I was thinking maybe we could go to the, the, the shelter. And I was like, okay, I'll oh, just sh- skip lunch today. I'll, I'll eat on set. We go. And then Nivea, come here. And then guess who was there? Oh, who was a lucky girl? Who is a, a, oh, look at that face. Look at that face. Girl. Oh, and oh. <laughs> when she came in, she was extremely aggressive. Oh. I mean, she would attack children. Like, you name it, this dog was on the kill list. Oh, wow. And there was a woman there who had taken the time to at least get her out of a crate. It took two months without biting and all that. And it was just a, a big problem. She goes, oh, I, this dog can't get put down. She's so special. I, I have to protect her. And she did. And then she got transferred to another unit of animal, you know, welfare. Yeah. And she was going to be in the cars driving around the city. So she was leaving that location. The next day when I brought my senior boy back to meet her to see if they were compatible, yeah. she was there like cleaning out her locker. Oh. And staff said, you are never going to believe who's here and who might adopt your dog that you put two months of work into. And she walked out to the lobby and she saw me and she just started crying. <gasps> And and see, that's, yeah. that's fate. That's, that's, that's not a coincidence yeah. that, that Tell you were whole story yeah. and all the abuse and all the horrific, you know, things she went through oh. and I, took, and I took her and, you know, and she was just, she said, I knew, I knew, but think about the faith that that woman had, that something was coming for her. Right was going to be here with something. Was yeah, exactly. She saw something. Oh my God, look at you. That something was coming for her that was bigger and better than the life that she had known. Yeah. And and she was right. Isn't that amazing? I mean, I took this dog for her first swimming. I took her to swimming lessons. <laughs> she had like a life vest and, and uh. an instructor. I mean, you can't even. <laughs> it's so, I mean, I'm a crazy, crazy. Person. No, I'm a so, crazy dog lady. I'm, she, I'm so she, proud she, of it. Oh, I can see her dog behind you. Oh, is she? Oh, this oh. is what she does. She always does this when I do the show. She'll be like, I'm going to, I'm going to photo bomb. She knew exactly where to go, where she, I could see her face. That's, she totally knows this. Isn't that she's funny? Little, she's a model. Look at her. She, she knows know. her camera. Look at her. I know. Look at her little. Uh, she, she is. Okay. So her eyes. Look oh, at her she's eyes. so beautiful. She has oh, like eyeliner. Her. It's so cute. It's yeah, so she's pretty. like an Egyptian, you know? Yeah, totally. Wait, look no, at she's us. she's beautiful. We're just like totally just like blabbing on about our dogs. I mean, You're look sweet. at her and look at that eraser she has on her nose. I know, she, right? It's an eraser. It's so cute. There's a huge pencil walking around missing its eraser. <laughs> look at it peering between the chairs. It's so freaking cute. Oh my God, I can't even take it. I can't take <laughs> it. Oh guys. Okay, I you know, know I actually, you know what I'm doing? I'm going to pick up groceries because oh. that's- Oh shit, girl. You oh, know, sorry. you sit outside the store and they put them in your car? Yeah. Oh, yeah. you're going to do curbside. <laughs> You don't have to go do the shopping. Yeah, because no, it's so I did stressful. It today. It's totally stressful. Yeah, All right, well, go stressful. pick up your groceries. I'm so Maggie? Well, most of it's their meat. Oh, oh, God. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, I got some vegetables. That's it. Okay. All right, go oh. get their meat and okay. your veggies. And um, Maggie, you're so freaking awesome. Oh, you're so freaking awesome. Nothing's so, changed. Nothing's I just to marry you. This is I, so know, I know. <laughs> I know. And I would accept for sure. <laughs> <laughs> all right so listen love you guys yeah you too and we'll it's see each other dogs join us i know totally but we'll keep in touch about all of this stuff because i think there's there's something we need to do i think so too i can feel it in the air and i yeah. think that we should um enjoy um um uh, have our friend perry join us too totally kind of- absolutely okay. let's yeah. do an hour okay, okay. All right. So Bye, Maggie. I Thank you. Love, you. love you guys. Keep safe. Okay. Yes, you too. Bye, guys. Okay. Bye, sweetie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, my God. I love Maggie so much. I mean, that was just like so fun, especially since our dog started getting involved in <laughs> this show. I, I love it because I, I think it's one of those things where we're just so naturally, naturally ourselves. There goes Eggie again, naturally ourselves um, and kind of just expressing what we really care about. And hopefully you guys um, got that sense through listening or watching that we are both people who you know, we are who we are. Uh, we try to be as genuine, as authentic as possible. And Maggie is, man, she is true blue. 
uh, fame, fortune, none of that has gone to her head. And that's what makes her so incredible. Um, and so I'm, I'm so happy that she was able to come on the show. Uh, so I hope you guys enjoyed it. I sure did. Uh, take care, um, and stay safe everyone and keep writing in and tell me what you think about the show. Also, um, please spread the word, tell people that you can catch the May Lee show on all major podcast platforms, as well as YouTube, uh, on our channel to watch it in video form. Okay. So we want to keep this going and we want to spread the word and, and we want to inspire and motivate and talk about issues that we care about, but also then talk about, talk to people like Maggie Q who are, who are just amazing individuals. So, all right, guys, take care. And until next time.